Japan in stand up comedy in Japan with Yuki Nives today. Thank you so much for joining, Yuki. Thank you, Joy. Thank you for having me. So, this is Seek Sustainable Japan, and、mm-hmm. people might be wondering what the heck does comedy have to do with sustainability? <laughs> But I have had the pleasure of talking to Bobby and Ali of Japan by River Cruise. And I really truly believe, and I've heard this from loads of people working in very serious industries, that you have to have a sense of humor to survive. <laughs> you have to be able to take a joke, make fun of things which are very serious, and it helps you cope with life. Have you found that as well, Yuki? Uh, I think so. I think humor can help a lot of、um, situations. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to Bobby, who introduced me to you. And you did a really fun Christmas special.、Uh, you did the year of news with them, right?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was fun. I love your, your take on it. Now, when I, of course, this month is. Women's History Month,、mm-hmm. which a lot of people don't know.、Mm-hmm. Um, we had International Women's Day,、mm-hmm. but one day is just not enough, right?、Mm-hmm. So I was really happy that America at least is celebrating International Women's Month.、Mm-hmm. Um, but I did find this、uh, Kishida Toshiko, who lived in the 1800s. I found this, and she is probably one of the more Famous Japanese women in history, right? And she says, Women's history is an assertion that women have a history,、mm-hmm. which I thought she might be the first stand up woman comic in Japan. What do you think? That sounds like a joke to me. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about you, Yuki. How did you get interested in doing comedy?、Mm. Where does that come from? Yeah, so as a child, I didn't grow up watching comedy much, even Japanese comedy, let alone stand up comedy. So, first of all, I didn't even watch a lot of TV.、And、my parents were very strict, and I was only allowed to watch TV for like half an hour a day. So that is not much. And then also,、um, I grew up in a very rural area, and the house I grew up in had only like five TV channels. And one of them often had a signal issue. So basically, there's only like four channels. <laughs> I and... love that. That reminds me of my childhood. I, I, we only had a few channels. Really? The kids of today, you're much younger than me, but growing、uh-huh. up in Hawaii, it was like that when I was a kid.、Uh-huh. But the kids, people of today, you just have too much choice. I think there's too yeah, much. So.、Right? Yeah. Or、oh, mm, mm, oh, maybe I didn't have enough. <laughs> yeah. And then actually, my grandfather might have been the, the only person in Japan that. Dodges the NHK guy. So, because no one dodges the NHK guys, right? So, oh no, nobody does that. I don't <laughs> think that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, when they first built that house, there was no reception for NHK. And yet, one of those NHK guys came to collect the fee, and my grandfather punched him in the face. No. I mean, that's what my neighbors told me. I wasn't there, I wasn't born yet, <laughs> but that's what I heard. Um, and then, so later on, they got the signal, they got the NHK reception, but no one from the NHK wanted to come back to <laughs> my grandpa to collect the fee. So, we, I heard that they got away with not paying for the NHK for like next 30 years. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. <laughs> I've had some very interesting conversations with the NHK guy over the years because we have never watched it. We haven't had our TV hooked up、mm-hmm. to anything that could connect to NHK. And I've invited them inside the house to check. So we、sure、don't get it. Because、right. I, I want him to believe me. But yeah, I don't think they're coming around anymore, right?、Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was your first introduction to comedy through your violent. Father? <laughs> Grandfather? Who was that? Yeah. So, um, Yeah, so because I didn't watch TV much,、uh, I didn't know any popular Japanese comedians.、Uh, but 
even when I saw them, sometimes I didn't find them very funny. Like, um, again, I don't know much about them, so I might be wrong, but it seems to me uh, like like there was uh, lots of uh, slapsticks and puns and sometimes even like a, they just look like bullying to me. So I didn't grow too much interest in them. Um, but even though I didn't have much interest in, in comedy, like uh, comedy in TV, uh, like co professional comedians, uh, now that I think about it, I think I always loved telling stories uh, and making my mom laugh, making my friends laugh. Uh, but I just didn't see it as comedy. It was just something that I like doing. And I think in 2018, I saw the Netflix special of Ali Wong. Uh, she's an Asian American comedian that's very popular now. And not only the show was hilarious and I laughed so much, but it was shocking to me to see a woman speaking so loud and honest and even vulgar. Um, and then, you know, it's often said that uh, women, uh, especially Japanese women, are brought up and taught to be quiet, compliant, and non-confrontational. Non but the reality is not only we are taught to be this way and we blindly believe that, but it's more like we are trained hard uh, to be this way and be often be punished uh, if we stick out or if we don't comply. And then the most effective way to make us uh, obey is to use the miseshime. Uh, I don't know the equivalent word in English, but it's like um, making an example as a warning, right? Um, so like I said, I grew up in the countryside, so... Where? Be, Where yeah. in the countryside? Kyushu. Where? In Q Kyushu. Where in Kyushu? Uh, Oita. No! I lived, I that was my first job. I worked in really? Oita for three years. Oh my God. I was at Tsurusaki Koko. Uh huh. Oh, Tsurusaki Koko. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. You know? You're famous for uh, sports, right? What, baseball? Yeah. There was a really famous Olympic mm -hmm. swimmer who oh, never so came cool. to school because he was a famous Olympic swimmer. I never saw him, but his banners were all around the school, like congratulating yeah. him, cheering uh -huh. for him. Yeah, very sporty. Yeah, very. yeah. I, I wasn't a sporty kid, but yeah. yeah. Uh, wow, so what a coincidence. Yeah. yeah, so you might remember like uh, there are lots of like vegetable fields, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have seen one, but um, they often use that. Uh, they hang a dead crow, you know, crow, raven. I never see. saw that. Yeah, so they, they would hang a dead crow as a warning sign for other crows. Like, don't mess with that field. I will kill you. So, so and then they are usually fake, uh, sometimes real ones, but they are usually fake, but it still works, right? It, it scares them, them away. So, um, like women, we grow up watching those uh, other women who don't comply, who rebel, and then they get punished so hard like they like um, yeah so we watch that and then we think oh i don't want to be like that i would do just you, do you think that happens more to women than men growing up in japan yeah to definitely. be made and like to shame them to mm -hmm. make that example so that others don't do it um, I, I did when I was teaching there. Oh, no, I, I said the name of the high school, but this mm -hmm. was many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, some of the teachers would carry around a stick. And this was really common. Like when the students wouldn't answer, they would tap them on the, the shoulder or something. I never saw them hit. Mm -hmm. But there was always like that threat. Like uh -huh. if you don't, mm -hmm. I might because I'm mm -hmm. carrying a stick. And that was really shocking to me. Mm -hmm. um, I also saw some like serious discipline mm -hmm. going on, which I did not agree with. So that was a real shock. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And girls, quite often girls would be shamed, like you said. Yeah, for different reasons than yeah. boys. Mm. 
yeah, I don't think it's allowed now. I think it, that's illegal now, though. <laughs> I'm really happy to hear that. I, I'm pretty sure they changed it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. Much better. Mm. Um, but yeah, even even verbally, though, even mm -hmm. without the physical shaming, I think even saying something verbally can still mm -hmm. do a lot of damage, right? Yes. Especially yeah. to girls or women, we internalize mm -hmm. a lot of the negativity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not only in school, but, you know, in uh, like uh, in society and in media. Uh, so during the uh, late 90s or early 2000s, uh, the most famous Japanese feminist was uh, Tajima, Tajima-san. Mm. And then she was the target of a mockery on TV. So every time she's invited to a show full of men, and then they all just make a, they just mock her, calling her ugly, old and stuff. So we, so what kind of influence would that give to young girls uh, growing up watching that right so we all think that oh i don't want to be her right so we would just shut up yeah mm. so that's <laughs> wow. wow speaking so it's it's part of speaking out right mm -hmm. and standing up mm -hmm. and saying things boldly it's so scary yeah, but is. once you do it you mm -hmm. feel empowered right and you can support other women Mm -hmm. who are also doing it. I'm really, mm -hmm. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. This is not easy doing stand-up, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's let's yeah. talk a little bit about the event and then we'll talk more about you and then we'll come back to the event at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about not just a diversity hire. Tell me about mm -hmm. this event that <laughs> you've created mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. have this great lineup of mm -hmm. women who are going to perform at the event and it's sold out congratulations yeah and yeah it just sold out last night that's mm -hmm. awesome so can you introduce the other uh women comics who are going to be doing the stand-up mm. yes so i um so it says the best the best female comics of tokyo but when I say best, I don't mean that uh, these uh, six people are better than other women comics in Tokyo, because I know many more women comedians, uh, they are as funny as these people are. But those are the six people that I definitely wanted on my uh, first show. So the first one you can see here is Kirara. Yeah, she's one of a very few uh, very few comedian, stand-up comedian in Japan that uh, do comedy full time. Yeah, there are not many of them. Uh, so she's a professional uh, full time comedian. I came across her YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she is hilarious. Yeah, she calls herself the Pink Unicorn, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> And she has such a great following on YouTube as well. It's great to see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, Kilala is professional and uh, she is not only she's funny, but she's spreading an awareness about mental health, diversity and feminism. And she's actively performing at international comedy festivals and competitions such as Edinburgh Fringe Festival and Seattle Comedy Competition and uh, and in prestigious comedy clubs like Laugh Factory and she also appeared on TV shows like Asia's Got Talent. Yeah, so, oh, and then also this could be the last chance for people to see her in Japan. She's preparing to uh, move to Probably the US. Uh, yeah, we are not sure yet, but definitely outside Japan. So yeah, I, yeah. We're, that, uh, we're sad, sad to see her go, yeah. but we wish her all the best, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I saw another uh, Japanese woman who I really like, who's so mm -hmm. funny, mm -hmm. Kazu Kusano, who I saw her stand-up routine uh, from the US. And she was making me laugh so hard. So I know that 
Japanese women can be very popular mm -hmm. on the stand-up circuit in America. So wherever she goes, we wish her the best of luck. That's awesome. Yes. Um, also, Chalice, Leandra Davis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's Chalice. Uh, yeah, so she is a singer, artist, lyricist, model, and also she's also pretty new in the scene. Uh, she's, yeah, uh, I'm very excited to have her on my show. Yeah, I saw her <laughs> YouTube channel as well. She's a great mm -hmm. singer yeah. and she's funny. Mm -hmm. She has this like love song with a dinosaur on her YouTube channel, which I thought oh, was really I funny. So I'll, I'll, put, I'll put the link below. <laughs> She's mm -hmm. hilarious. You got some funny women in the lineup. It should be a great event. Um, mm -hmm. Let's go next. Next, uh, Maya Kinosa. Yeah. yeah. So actually, she was the uh, first person I contacted when I decided to have this show. Uh, actually, she's also the person who gave me the idea of doing uh, an all women show for uh, Women's History Month. I first met her in 2020 and uh, we talked on the, the first time we met, we talked about doing this uh, all women show. But during that time, uh, the COVID situation was much worse. And then I thought maybe we could do it next year, but 2021 still, yeah, bad. And then this year, like a uh, uh, end of January, February, it seemed like the situation was getting better. So I just decided, okay, I will do this now. And then I just straight away contacted her. Yeah, so she's a stand-up comedian slash uh, creative copywriter. She's very intelligent. Um, um, I, yeah, so there was something that I found online about her. She says she's a mix of uh, Takoya. I think she lived in Osaka. Yeah. Uh, let me find it. <laughs> I'm sure she'll she'll have a great intro for the yeah. event. Yeah. Yeah, I don't find it right now, but there was something funny uh, on online about her. Like she's a half uh, takoyaki, half something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You will. Yeah. Find out later. Awesome. And then it's Kinaka. She's yeah. your headliner, right? Yeah. So it's such a shame that you are in Hiroshima and then cannot see her. Anyone who doesn't get to see her is missing out. She is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, she's also she's full of surprise. Like her comedy is not what you would expect from uh, like by looking at her. Yeah, she's just um, there is no word to describe her. You have to watch her. I, I found her on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. uh, she she was at an event, a Tokyo stand up event, right. uh, doing an interview with, mm -hmm. and then that was really funny. Yeah. And they asked her, What's comedy for you? Mm -hmm. So before I tell you what her answer is, I'll ask you, Yuki, what's comedy for you? What is it? What does it mean? I think you said before, a way for you to cope or something. Yeah, that's one of the things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. She said, Comedy is like medicine. And mm -hmm. then she's like, no, that sounds really bad. But that's mm -hmm. kind of true. Like medicine, <laughs> medicine for life. And I thought that was really cool. Great yeah. answer. Medicine for life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, she has been in the stand-up comedy game since 2017. So she's she's been doing it for a few years now, right? Yeah. How did you uh, get in touch with her? Do you guys already know each other? Or did you like reach out to people asking, does anyone want to join this event? No, I just, I, I contacted her. Yeah, we, yeah, we've been doing uh, comedy for uh, a, a few years now, so. Nice. And uh, be, <laughs> I love that your event uh, mm -hmm. is complimentary suites, of course, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a women's event. Uh, whenever I do events in, uh, it's like a women's discussion event or something. We always have to have sweets. Dessert is really important if you've yeah, got a women's event, right? I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kat Randall. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's the MC. Uh, she's uh, not only she's a great comedian and MC, but she's also such a sweet person. And then I, I cannot MC, so <laughs> I couldn't have this event without her. Like, yeah, so um, yeah, right well, away. It's hard that. to be a MC and a performer. It's yes. kind of nice if you just have someone who's just an MC, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. What's her background? Is she based in Tokyo? Yes. Yeah. Uh, she's from the US. Yeah. She's, uh, I think she's living in Japan for quite some time now. Yeah. Mm. And she's also fluent in Japanese as well. So I, I am totally relying on her. <laughs> so she's going to do it uh, like the MCing in Japanese and English? Oh, th th this event is going to be all in English, but I'm sure she can do that in Japanese as well. Yeah, mm. uh, that that was one interesting thing that Itsuki said in the interview, too. She said she prefers doing stand up in English, that for mm -hmm. her stand up is really hard in Japanese, mm -hmm. even though that's her native language. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that, too? Yeah, I used to do. Um, so one thing, uh, so one stand-up was not a thing a few years ago there was only few people doing that uh like a uh, zenjiro sign shimizu san but it's still not like uh, the, uh there's not enough audience and then also so that's i think it connects to what i was saying earlier like uh, women in general but especially japanese women we are not brought up to we are not trained to express our opinions we are not trained to say our you know uh yeah we are not used to it so um it's also i've heard some uh this is something i heard from an english teacher in japan uh she says that uh when she's teaching at schools, uh, there's a big difference in boys and girls, their learning process. And then it looks like girls suddenly got a tool to speak when they learn English. They can express uh, their more honest opinion in English, like they suddenly got something, uh, a language, acquired a language to express uh, their own opinion. So I think there's, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's true in, mm, yeah, in comedy as well. Yeah. Well, that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome to have that added layer of mm -hmm. ability to communicate the mm -hmm. way you want to communicate and not feeling limited mm -hmm. because it's outside your mm -hmm. native language, outside your culture. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, and of course, I, speaking of English teaching, I have a really funny story from when I was learning Japanese mm -hmm. and starting English teaching. So I was studying Japanese really hard, never learned before. I was in the classroom all the time. And sometimes the boy students particularly would like heckle me. Now, you know this as a stand up comic being heckled, right? And uh, make fun of me or make jokes. And I didn't understand. And so I got really frustrated in one class and I said, that's, that's like messing up a punchline. <laughs> right? And then there's just eruption of laughter. And I was like, what? Why? And then the because it's always team teaching when you're a jet, right? And so my team teacher said to me, I think you meant Ningen, maybe? <laughs> So for anybody who doesn't know Japanese, you're the Japanese teacher, right? You must have loads of examples like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Ningen is human. I'm also a person. Treat me with respect is what I was trying to say. But what I actually said was I am a carrot. Mm -hmm. I'm also a carrot. Mm -hmm. So please, you know, <laughs> no respect. No respect whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's humiliating in the room, but if you do stand up, you can use it later in the yeah, stand up. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the if, things. If I, I ever do stand up, I'll, I'll use that. Yeah, joke. yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would definitely work. <laughs> now, you have been teaching Japanese for a long time. That's like your main job, right? Yeah. So you must have loads of examples of, of funny things. I saw that 
in uh, some of your Japanese website, you were talking about if you say it like this, if mm -hmm. you don't use hiragana, for example, mm -hmm. you can have a totally different meaning than what you're intending. Mm -hmm. So do you ever use some of your like Japanese and uh, teaching Japanese insights in your stand-up comedy? Uh, I think so. I mean, yeah, I mean, that could be a good material, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, should we go back to the event? So we're not done introducing. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a couple more people in the show that we need to introduce, right? Yes. So we talked about Itsuki Naka and mm -hmm. Kat Randall and mm -hmm. Natasha Porwa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she is a uh, yeah, she is the our young debutant. She uh, I I saw her doing open mics a couple of times, and then I thought she was funny. Uh, she is um, I think she's a IT programmer, and I yeah definitely wanted one new person in the lineup, so I thought she would be perfect. That's awesome. How do you get into comedy so that's that's you yuki nives such a cool mm -hmm. picture it's like you're in a jungle <laughs> <laughs> so how do you how do you train to be a stand-up comic is it all from yourself or do you look on youtube and practice what other people are doing and imitate them or how do you train yourself you just learn by doing how do you do it so you, you can definitely go to open mics. So open mics is uh, where anyone can just jump in and then join. They, uh, anyone can sign up and then join. Uh, so open mics, it's a mix of professional comedians and then someone, uh, it can be someone totally new. It can be your first time and you go up there and then try your set and then you see the reaction and then maybe... Uh, you improve and then come back next week. So you should definitely, if someone wants to start on uh, stand up, they should definitely go to uh, one of those open mics. There are uh, several in Tokyo. Yeah, so yeah, I would recommend going to open mics. Just you, it, it can be you can just go watch for the first time and then try next time. Hmm. And I always, you know, like when I first came over to Japan, people always said, "Oh, Japanese people are so shy." Mm -hmm. But then if we had like a school event and on a big stage and we had like some students performing karaoke, like the most shy student would get up there <laughs> and perform karaoke. Uh -huh. so I don't think I think when it comes to performance, mm -hmm. I think a lot of Japanese people have like this internal confidence mm -hmm. that if you give them a mic, they have an added mm -hmm. confidence. Where does it come from? I love it. Well, actually, I'm that kid. Are you? <laughs> yeah, no one, no one, uh, I, no one who knows me would expect me doing comedy. So, yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Do, how does your family or friends think about you doing comedy? What's their reaction? I don't think my family knows. I haven't. It's not. It's not a secret. Yet, but I haven't uh, actively like. I, I haven't told them. They might know me, like it's easy to Google my name. So, or maybe my father doesn't know how to spell my name. So, <laughs> maybe he doesn't know. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, yeah. Going back to the event, tell us about the, the reason you wanted to do the event and the, what it's going to benefit. So, you're talking about uh, the UN women, it gets mm -hmm. the donation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all the proceeds uh, will go to uh, UN Women, uh, which uh, they are the organization. Uh, they are doing a lot of work for women in not only in Ukraine, but also Afghanistan. And then, yeah, so I hope that some of that money will go to mm, help those women. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> it's a, a fabulous organization of course united nations uh they do a lot of great work around the world but i think especially for helping empower women uh we know that when you empower women they not only help themselves 
they not only pull themselves up, but they pull up their kids. They educate their kids. They help other people in their communities. So what the United Nations is doing, trying to help women around the world, is really helping a greater community mm -hmm. around the world. So it's a fabulous organization to support with this event. I'm really happy to see that. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Especially now, there's we know there's a lot of uh, women, like you said, in, in the Ukraine who are really struggling, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, anything else about the event that you wanted to talk about? How you decided um, to do it? Um, how you reached out to these comedians? Uh, you have a collaboration with a woman hmm? production team, a media production team? Yeah, Panic Ball Productions. Yeah. So uh, Lilu is the director of uh, this uh, production and she's an amazing woman actually she has she just did a speech at the panel discussion at the uh, for the international uh, women's day at another event last week and um, i really uh, respect her and look up to her so i'm very happy to have them yeah. awesome uh, I noticed on your your Instagram that you also do, we talked about, a little bit before about, do you like to do comedy in English or Japanese? And you said this event is all in English. Mm -hmm. But on your Instagram, you were talking about you did a routine in Japanese. Right. And here is the proof mm -hmm. that the <laughs> famous comedian yeah. thought you were funny, right? Yeah, that's the other mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is it like doing comedy in Japanese versus English? How is it different for you? So um, earlier I said there is a limitation uh, for Japanese women to express ourselves in Japanese. That's true. But the, it's also true that I have a limitation expressing myself in English because it's my uh, second language. It's not my native language. Um, I couldn't have done a Japanese stand-up two years ago. Now I can because now I am used to uh, speaking up, uh, yeah, speak, speaking up, and then um, my opinion, and then saying things that I want to. I have trained through stand up, so I think I have more confidence confidence in doing that. So I think it was the perfect timing to try doing it in my own language, and then yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> Do you find that your style of comedy is a little different? So, for example, some people uh, might be very sarcastic mm -hmm. or uh, use like wordplay or something. Mm -hmm. Is is your style the same in English and Japanese or do you change it a little bit? Uh, style is the same, but take uh, like a technical things like, a, for example, if you are doing a pun, then it would only work in English or it would only work in Japanese. Yeah, so it, uh, so that time, uh, that one, that event in, on Instagram, I did um, a thing that I always wanted to do, but that would only work in Japanese. So that was really fun. Wow, <laughs> nice. And then your audience, like your audience for this event will be uh, people in Japan. So you're doing it in English, but do some of your jokes cross over? Like, for example, my story about being in the classroom, right. ningen or ninjin, right? Mm -hmm. um, so would you do that kind of joke where you're you're talking about like a multilingual mm -hmm. kind of joke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that when the joke is so niche and then people like are expats in Tokyo or expats who live in Japan would know. Because com a lot of comedy is about uh, relatability. And then, yeah. Yeah, so there's a crossover. And then I love that. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Uh, do you speak in Japanese with Oita Ben? Uh, not anymore. When I, <laughs> when I speak with my mom, yeah. But not. Yeah. It not comes often. back, right? Like I grew up in Hawaii, so... Uh, when I speak with people from Hawaii, if they have a strong accent, mm -hmm. then it'll it'll come back a little bit. But 
I'm so out of practice. Um, my husband says, I just, I sound like I've lost my mind. <laughs> Not used to it at all. Um, yeah, so we've talked about the event. Uh, we talked about you being a Japanese teacher. Um, do you want to introduce your Japanese website a little bit? Because I think that's really cool. Yeah, sure. So your main uh, online teaching, is it bow and arrow? Mm -hmm. And I love this, all the visuals that you do on your website to teach the different um, vocabulary and kanji for different mm -hmm. things. You're really a good designer as well. I love it. Are you are you doing this or are you working with somebody who's doing that? I'm doing all of that. What do you find is like a one of the biggest hurdles? You seem to focus a lot on the pronunciation, the phonetics, the intonation. You mm -hmm. think that's one of the harder things to master for people learning Japanese? Yeah, it's a harder thing to master, but it's not the most important thing. I think it's uh the reason I'm doing this is there's not uh, enough information online about uh, this, and then people are requesting me to do it. So I'm, um, I have lots of uh, information about pronunciation, but my advice is not get caught up in, in pronunciation. Like uh, it's not the most important thing. Mm. Uh, is your dream to leave uh, Japanese teaching behind? and become a full-time stand-up comic? Well, my uh, my goal, my dream is to be a filmmaker, actually. I wanted to be a, a, a film director. Uh, that's also one of the reasons I like uh, doing uh, stand-up comedy, because stand-up comedy, you get to write and then direct, and then you can act. So it's like a whole production but you you can do it all by yourself without the budget mm. yeah so if you're a one one woman show mm. uh doing your own film have you done any filmmaking yourself no actually uh, starting starting comedy was the first time i have tried to do anything that i actually wanted to do mm. Yeah, so that was a huge step for me. And then I think I'm getting closer to um, my dream every day. So are you training to learn filmmaking or are you just following people that you respect and then learning that way? How are you doing it? How are you going to follow your dream? Um, <laughs> so I, I don't know, like, like this past couple of months, I was, it, it has been crazy busy preparing for this show, but, um, um, actually I think, uh, so Lilu, uh, the, the film director that I was talking about, uh, she says the, the best way to get started is to get started, like go, go, uh, to the, to the site and then do the assistant job. So that's the same advice I have for people who wants to uh, start doing stand-up comedy, right? Just go to the open mics, uh, start doing it. So I think that would be the best way. Just learn by doing. I mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get out there and do it. And you are a challenger. Mm -hmm. I saw, also saw this on Instagram. You've been surfing? <laughs> yeah, so that's like an artificial uh, wave pool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now, now you said after you broke your toe, toenail? Your toenail. What happened? <laughs> I don't, I think, I think it, uh, the surfboard hit it, I think. Uh, oh. when, I, when I got out of the pool, it was gone, so... <laughs> And you can't see it from here, but all along the side are all men watching you right. uh, learn how to surf, right? right. So it's, it's kind of like stand up. You got to be brave yeah, yeah, to yeah. try it. And you're the center of attention, mm -hmm. learning how to surf on this wave and everybody's around watching you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Were you yeah. nervous? Yeah, that's also another thing that I wouldn't have done it two years ago. Yeah, um, I think stand-up has helped me a lot of my fears. Like, uh, now I'm not afraid to uh, go do things 
that I want to do just because I want to do. Like before I would be, oh, maybe that's not the place for me. Uh, they are on, only men are doing it. It's not for me. But now I think if I wanted to do it, then why not just do it? Like I don't care. Mm. That's awesome. I also saw this other challenge that you did. You were flying. What <laughs> is this fly station? Do they have this in Tokyo? Yeah, uh, I think it's in Saitama. It's not too far though. What was it like? Was it fun? This was very scary. It was scarier than it looks. <laughs> I think I've always been afraid of heights, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I made myself learn how to do rock climbing because I wanted to overcome my fear of heights, mm -hmm. which sounds a bit crazy, right? But I learned how to trust the ropes. I learned how to trust myself. And then I was a little bit less afraid of heights, but mm -hmm. jumping out of an airplane or doing this kind of thing, I don't know if I could do that. That's brave. Yeah. That's really brave. <laughs> I wouldn't do the real thing though. No, you wouldn't jump out of an airplane? Oh, no. <laughs> so it's like a stand-up comedy has helped you to be fearless yeah. in many ways. Oh, that, yeah not to be afraid of taking mm -hmm. risk. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your next challenge then? I've seen surfing. I've seen skydiving. What's mm -hmm. next? Oh, uh, so during the the pandemic, uh, and then I, I kind of started um, uh, cru cruise. It's like a, a skateboard, but for cruising. Mm. And then I, I have been just skating around my neighborhood, but maybe I will make a debut at the skate park someday. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is that. Well, that's it. My, my kids are skateboarders. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They started young, they're mm -hmm. fearless, mm -hmm. but starting skateboarding when you're a bit older, I think is much more scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know what it, how long it takes you to recover from injury. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't do that without the uh, protective gears. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All the, the helmet, everything. Yes. Body armor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then again, that's one of the things. Like two years ago, I wouldn't have done that. But now I am not afraid of being uh, uh, embarrassing myself, being humiliated uh, in front of other people. So, yeah, I, I, I would just do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have any any other comics that you would like to shout out that you really respect and you like watching them? Oh, can can it be someone? anybody? Okay, so it's not someone from Tokyo, but it's just so I mentioned Ali Wong. That's uh, Ali Wong. It's someone who uh, first inspired me. So she's like the watching her is like uh, seeing a crow who gets away with stealing the crops and then just flying away without getting caught and killed right so uh, so she's the one who first inspired me and then but like uh uh that wasn't enough that didn't convince me to actually start doing it because i saw her and i thought oh no this is this takes too much skill like, and she, she can get away with this because she's so skillful, she's so funny, and then this is not something I can do it. Uh, but after I found her, I started watching more stand-up com uh, com uh, comedy. And then one day I came across uh, this, another uh, Netflix special called Homecoming King by Hassan Minhaj. And then not only it was funny, but uh, like a, I, it was, there was so many emotions throughout uh, the show. Like I was crying, I was laughing, and then it completely moved me. And then even though he's a man, and then he's not the Japanese one, he's an um, Indian American man, but there were so many things that I could relate to. Uh, he's also a firstborn child of a Asian household. And then there were so many things that I remember from my own childhood. Yeah. Uh, so the comedy is very subjective. Uh, people could argue that, no, uh, a good comedian can make anyone laugh. But that's hardly the truth. 
like a, so comedy, everyone has the different sense of humor, not just the sense of humor, but it's also about the relatability, right? Um, just because you are a woman, it doesn't mean that you can only relate to women or just because you're Asian, you can only relate to women. But realistically speaking, um, women face different issues compared to men, right? Uh, majority of the uh, sexual violence victims are women or so as the domestic violence. So it's there is not many women who would find rape jokes truly funny, right? We might laugh out of uncomfortableness. Um, but this is not something we are looking to uh, we, that's not something we want, right? Like uh, when we go to a comedy show, uh, we want to relax and laugh and just have a good time. Um, and then you hear something that you are constantly reminded of, uh, of being women. And then that's um, not something that I would want to experience. So I wanted to create a show that I would want to go. And then one thing is that one thing that I didn't want to do was I didn't want to change other comedians. I didn't want to tell other comedians what to do or what not to do. Because there can be different kinds of comedy, right? So there can be offensive comedy, there can be dark humor, there can be anything. But I thought, uh, why not? Like, uh, there can be one place in Tokyo that the woman can come out and relax and have fun and then forget about the, uh, you know, hardships that they actually face in real life. Mm. So yeah, that's why I wanted to create this show. That's awesome. And so important to have a safe space where mm -hmm. women can feel comfortable doing mm -hmm. comedy. And I think also women can feel comfortable going and listening to comedy. Um, like you said, you know, I've I've heard some horrible stand up comedians uh, talking about incest and joking about it, things that I would never include in a comedy. And there are some comedians that say there's nothing off limits. Everything can be funny. Um, I, I really respect that you brought up Hassan Minaj. He's, he's one of my favorites. And he did that great Netflix series called Patriot Act. Yeah. Um, so his humor is so smart mm -hmm. and so fact-based and mm -hmm. so political Yes. and really hard-hitting, difficult issues, mm -hmm. but he makes them funny, right? So that is such a skill mm -hmm. to turn it around yes. and, and to make something really difficult mm -hmm. and really has an impact, mm -hmm. but still it's funny and it's mm -hmm. enjoyable to watch, right? Yeah. Is that the kind of comedy that you'd like to do? Yeah, yeah, actually that's, um, he is the one who actually convinced me to start doing it myself. Like uh, if, uh, if one comedian can change someone's life like that, um, maybe my story might influence someone in a better way. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Awesome. Um, sometimes I, I listen to, like I, I mentioned Kazu Kusano. Uh -huh. She's, I just want to shout out to her one more time because she did this great routine. Uh, it's available on YouTube and it made me laugh so hard. Um, mostly because like you say, comedy should be relatable, right? Um, so let me just show this screenshot here that I got of her. Have you ever heard of her? No, I have not. Uh -huh. So this is in the States and she's talking about how her mom came over from Japan and uh, came back to her apartment and saying, oh, you've got to check out this great store. They've got every kind of seafood you could imagine. You're going to love it. And she's like, no, mom, it's not OK. That's the aquarium. <laughs> but it, it's, it was so funny to me because I have experienced Every time I go to an aquarium in Japan, 
<laughs> every single Japanese person is looking at the big tanks of fish and crabs going, Oishi so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like no, that's wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't find it funny if you have not experienced it, right? Right. So mm -hmm. with the American audience, I was like, mm -hmm. that's wasted on them. I don't think yeah, they exactly. understand uh, that, right? Yeah, yeah. It just sounds like a bad joke to people who wouldn't, who doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they were laughing, but I was like. That joke would do really well in Japan. People yeah. understand that on a deeper mm -hmm. level, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, so this event is this Saturday. Um, yeah. Did you have to change how you were doing the in-person event because it's during the pandemic? Any yeah, so, special precautions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so there's a limit uh, limitation in the number of the audience we can have. Uh, if possible, I want to have a, a hundred audience members. So, but yeah, we have to be safe. So, mm. yeah, yeah. But that's great that you can go ahead. So many of the in-person events had to be canceled, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it was from this week that it's kind of the restrictions has lifted. So yeah. good timing. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, after this event, if everything goes well, and I'm sure it will, Yuki, uh, what's your next big project? Do you have anything else coming ahead after that next event? Yeah, so this show will probably be a monthly show. Mm. So I don't know if it's going to be all women every time, but it will definitely be a safe space for women. Mm. So that's what I guarantee. Nice. And I'm very excited about it. Yeah. And I also noticed in the event you have a special drink called mm -hmm. Silent Pool or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like a craft gin? Yeah. I've yeah, never yeah. heard of that. <laughs> yeah. Hand, hand craft gin. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there a lot of craft everything now, right? Yeah. Craft, beer, craft gin. Yeah, so I am very grateful that there were many sponsors who understood uh, what I was trying to make, and then they have, uh, yeah, supported and then helping this make happen. Yeah, yeah. So whiskey uh, company, they are one of them. Nice. Um, so you got your sponsors to help you cover the cost of the the mm -hmm. location. Mm -hmm. And then the ticket price goes to the UN. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then you guys are all donating your comedy for free to be part of the event. That's awesome. Yes. You're not doing a recording, are you, that people who can't come to Tokyo might be able to join and watch? Uh, so actually, Panic Bow Production will be recording some of the event. Uh, I don't know how... Uh, if it's going to be all of it but i think yeah uh you can see some of our stuff oh uh, even if we could see some highlights or something that would be great yes. yeah mm -hmm. uh is there anything else you wanted to talk about we have a few minutes before we're finished mm -hmm. yeah so i want uh i want to give out uh give a shout out to my dear friend Chieko. uh she's the one who encouraged me to do this show uh, and then also she's the one to she's the one who encouraged me to do this interview. Like uh, when when I received your message, I was like freaking out. I I am very bad at live interview. I am not. Uh, the reason I do stand up is stand up. I can write and prepare, and then I know everything that I will talk about. Real time conversation. It's a little harder for me, so I was like very hesitant. But she was like do it. You have to do it. And then, <laughs> yeah. So and then well, she's I'm, I'm glad I, I'm my interview with you is like skydiving. It's like yeah. surfing. It's a new challenge that you have now overcome. I love it. <laughs> right. Right. One of the things. <laughs> Thank you. Chieko. Thank you. Chieko. Yeah. Uh, she's a businesswoman. She has a, her own uh, marketing company and she's also one of the sponsors. Mm. And then she's the one who are uh, provide, providing with us with the sweets. So, yeah, I really appreciate it. And then, of course, uh, Bobby Judo. I know that he wrote a long email to you. 
<laughs> yeah, he has Bobby, done. Bobby is a great supporter yeah, of my amazing. show, and yeah. he has helped me find some great guests. Mm-hmm. And of course, I have listened to their show. I love their podcast. Mm-hmm. And I sometimes find great guests from listening to their podcast too. So I'm indebted. I appreciate the work that they do. I think we, all of us, we need to help each other and collaborate more because we're not competitors, right? Mm -hmm. We're all trying to get good information out there. So Mm -hmm. I I love it when people help me and I try to help other people as much as I can too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she's a sponsor. Chieko's a sponsor of the event too, huh? Yes. Yeah. Rise and Shine is her company. Oh, Rise and Shine. Nice. Um, I've done a lot of uh, trips and uh, consulting in Kamikatsu and their brand is Rise and Win, but oh. her brand is Rise and Shine, right? Okay. <laughs> nice. I like that idea. Rise and Shine. Uh, any other ideas you want to how about to aspiring women stand-up comics out there what advice would you give them so i mean um everyone can start uh from the place where they feel comfortable i mean they can only uh so it took me time to start talking about more vulnerable uh things uh you can start by you know a little silly jokes but first you have to get started so just go to open mics um and then try your stuff Mm. and then i think things will lead uh to where it will go naturally but would you recommend like people start writing things down that are funny and start practicing Mm -hmm. telling the story like Mm -hmm. to practice it or just to go to open mic and just try it wing it what's your should you plan in advance or just go for it i personally prepare everything but i also know lots of comedians who just never prepare and then they do great so i think yeah uh, some people are naturally talented (laughs) yeah i i always find that when i do the podcast with bobby and ollie Mm -hmm. like i'll i'll just be doing the podcast and then when i think about it later i'm like oh shoot like that was a joke that he said (laughs) he's so fast he's so fast on the ball and it takes me time to get it and then when i get it i'm like oh that was a joke (laughs) it happens to me as well especially with bobby so (laughs) He's so fast on the fly, right? Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Yuki, and best of luck with your event. Mm -hmm. I am sure your event is going to go well. It's Mm going to be so much fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of the clips um, from the production group that's going to hopefully release them. Mm -hmm. Um, How are we able to see some of the clips? Is that going to be on Instagram or... Yeah, so I will definitely put uh, information on Instagram. And then I'm not sure how many people are watching now, but if there is anyone, uh, especially women who was not interested in stand-up before, but now they are, and then even though the tickets are sold out, I might be able to add a few more. I have to talk to the venue first, so I, can't, I cannot guarantee. So if they grew interest, uh some of your audience then please definitely directly contact me yeah i might be able to do something what's the best way to contact you by instagram uh instagram Instagram, uh twitter facebook and uh anything would be fine yeah just find me on uh social media my name is yuki nivets yeah all right awesome thank you so much yuki have a great night everyone you too take care good luck Thank you. Break a leg. (laughs) I will. Thanks. Thanks.